Welcome to Build with Blocks, a show centered around the micro action figures and brick-based construction sets of the Halo universe. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, and I'm joined by Tom Fishenden. The hour approaches. Our podcast with Mega Constructs is near. <laughs> Can't see me shaking my head, but I am. Uh, oh, I'm so full of getting... regret right now. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Salvatore. Ahoy, how we doing, guys? And our very special guest, Jan Terrio from Mega Brand. Say hello, Jan. Hi, guys. Woo. Jan yeah. is a senior mar- uh, senior marketing manager, uh, the marketing communications with brand, uh, Mega Brands, and he's graciously agreed to join. As uh, these are exciting times, like we're getting Mega Construct sets for Halo. We're super excited right now. So, um, yeah, this is this is going to be a fun show. There's been lots of new sets announced. Um, we're excited to discuss that and some of the behind-the-scenes work that we've, you know, as collectors, we've just all, you know, been curious about. And Jan's going to help help us with some of those questions. So before we get into the main topic of the show, we're going to chat quickly as we do. Uh, we're going to go around the horn. I'll save Jan for last. We'll, that'll be a good roll-in. I mean, Jan's been doing the, the block stuff, right? Um, but, <laughs> Tom, how about you? What have you been up to? Have you been building? Have you been doing photography? Okay, so when I haven't been nailing my voice acting impressions, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I um, have mainly been on the photography front again. So I'm sure you saw, but I shot a few Halo 3 inspired photos yeah. um, purely because the release is coming up. So I thought it would be fun to shoot some stuff to tie into it. Um, coming to MCC on PC. So mm-hmm. I shot some of that. And apart from that, I've just been trying to not spend money on dinosaurs like last time. So I actually have money for all of the new Halo sets. Yeah, because they're out there now. They, they are, are. yeah. Um, very nice. Matt, how about yourself? Ooh, uh, not too much. Let's see. I've been out on the hunt for the new Infinite sets. There's whispers yeah. that they're here and there. So I've been... They are. I went on a hunt. I didn't find anything, but I was able to find a couple more of the... Uh, clash on the ring blind bag so i picked those up because nice. i'm in i'm in love with that series so grabbed a couple more of those but What'd other than that let's see i got the covenant ship i got another combat yeah. evolved marine a grunt and an elite so my favorite part of the my favorite part of the the blind series is what i got very nice yeah it's good stuff cool anything else no, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Oh, actually, we were on the uh, Evolved episode with the uh, Evolved team, so it was very nice to oh, yeah. get to chat with them about Halo. I've uh, wiped it from my memory. You have? <laughs> yeah, it, it's gone. <laughs> Aw. It was, it was a good time. They're uh, really awesome to talk to. We kicked around uh, some infinite talk, so very happy to be on there. Those guys are awesome over there, so that episode should be coming out soon. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited. To, uh, it'll probably be out before this one, but I'm excited to to hear what you guys had to say. I, uh, oh, yeah. I wasn't able to wasn't able to make it. So for myself, um, I you know I've been hunting, I've been out there hunting, um, and was able to get my hands on Series 12. So that is very exciting. Um, yeah, I mean we we haven't really talked at length because nobody has it, but but me now. But I feel like we can't because we got Jan on the show. So I'm happy. Let's just say that I'm happy. Uh-huh. Um, things things are going well right now um, with these these series. Um, I also there's lots of stuff because I, um, I think there's some behind the scenes stuff happening with like retailers and the new sets coming onto shelves. So a lot of stuff is on clearance right now um, at retail. So I was able to get the uh, Drogon set for pretty reasonable price, like seventy percent oh, off yep. from Game of Thrones. Nice. So. Uh, I stashed another one, another one of those away, and um, grabbed some Pokemon sets too. My my six year old is really into Pokemon right now, and oh, so nice. we've been uh, having some fun with that as well. Um, th- those Halo um, armor packs are on sale too, so lots mm-hmm. of clearance stuff. So if you if you missed that stuff, go grab that. Um, and I also stashed away a couple of those Lego DC minifigures, those those superhero figures. Oh you know, yeah, just yeah. just in case, just in case. You know, you never know when you want to get Superman from those those packs. Yeah, there you go. Um, so why don't we go over to Jan and see what, what have you been up to? Um, it's been an exciting time right now for yourself. Um, maybe just give a little bit of an overview of what you do and your role, um, and then we'll we'll dive into it. It'll be fun. 
Yeah, sure. Um, well, I've been uh, I've been working. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. I, I've been uh, I've been at Mega since uh, I don't know what the date was. I think it's been almost close to nine years now. So I was there pre Mattel acquisition. I've been sort of in a variety variety of roles since then. Most recently, I'm on the marketing communications team, and I've been involved in. Uh, getting people hyped up about some of the new sets that are coming up mm. and launching, uh, you know, uh, all those reveals on social media and our, on our website. And we also just completely revamped our uh, uh, user uh, gallery, uh, fan gallery on our website. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys uh, use that site, but uh, yeah. we, we just relaunched it as an app uh, called Mega Unboxed that we're pretty excited about. And Nice. Yeah. So is that that downloadable from an app store or, or is it like a web app? Uh, it's a web app. So if you oh, just okay. go to megaconstructs.com uh, slash unboxed, uh, you can install it uh, on your phone. It works on any device, uh, including a web browser if you're on a desktop. I haven't checked that out yet. I've, I've seen screenshots of it, but I'm excited to check that out. Very nice. Nice. So what is a day-to-day -day for you? Um, for you, you typically, I guess the typical day to day, I'm sure it's busier now, but um, can you walk us through that a little bit in your role? Yeah, I mean, a day to day for me is usually a lot of meetings. I spend an, ex <laughs> an extreme amount of time yeah, yeah. just kind of in conversations, which is, uh, you know, the role of any manager, I guess, in, in the marketing right. world. But in a, in a typical day, you know, I, I have meetings with my team. Uh, my team runs uh, social media, anything related to sort of e-com and, uh, you know, uh, digital marketing, uh, like uh, email blasts, okay. um, that sort of thing. So, you know, I have uh, frequent conversations with my team about everything that's going on, all the plans, uh, any blockers that they have. And then a lot of conversations with sort of the, what we call cross-functional meetings with other teams and, you know, just to kind of stay afloat of what's going on with the, you know, product development or kind of like big, uh, you know, marketing stuff that's coming up that I need to be aware of or that I need to participate in. Yeah, so in, in a typical day, if I was going in the office, part of my job would also be to occasionally sit in on kind of product development meetings where I get mm -hmm. to see the toys that are in development. Um, nice. But uh, these days, it's all done remotely because most of us are working from home. Yeah, but, right. Uh, right. Yeah. So, and I was going to ask that. So you're further downstream from the product development. You know, I'm in a similar type of role in marketing, so I understand how that works. But, but you know, you, you have... Can you maybe just talk a little a little bit about that just so we can set uh, listeners' expectations? You're not working on developing the product yourself or, or creating it. You're more on the marketing side. So they, they're doing their work. Maybe you're doing some research to help inform them a little bit. But um, you're, you're kind of like you're, you're given the product and you're saying, okay, here's what we have. Now, Jan, can you help us get this out in the marketplace? Yeah, more or less. Um, I did. I did spend some time in product development in a in a previous role. I was uh, okay. in in the collectors team for about eighteen months. I think I spent in that in that role, oh, nice. and I was actually I was actually brand manager for Halo for uh, for a, a period of that time. That was around the time I think it was twenty fifteen. It was like around the, the launch of uh, of Halo Five. So it's that Halo line. Five. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the oh, red nice. packs and all that. Ooh, oh, that see, is that an interesting awesome. questions yeah. to throw at you then. Hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I do have, uh, you know, some experience in that role, and I've, I've, uh, at the time, my role was more to kind of work more closely with the design team to sort of, um, I mean, to be clear, they're the ones designing the products. It's not, it's not marketing managers, uh, right. you know, designing the products or, or telling them what to, to put in it. Uh, but you know, um, I was working a lot more closely with them uh, to uh, to sort of guide that process and, and you know, collaborate on on how we're going to, you know, build a line and all that. Um, oh, so it was still a marketing role, but it was just like a product development marketing role. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah. So these days I'm a little bit more removed from it, although, you know, it's important for the marketing communications part of the business to stay pretty close to everything that's going on because uh, it just makes it easier for us to do our job. And then also we have, you know, some something to contribute to that as well in terms of like a 360 communication kind of thing, uh, you know, bringing back the feedback from the community or from the from the fans. A lot of that uh, we see 
on the you know on social media or on the forums or wherever. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Well, when, I want to rewind a little bit uh, before we get into like the the real meaty stuff that we're going to talk about. But we always we always start and ask our guests their history with Halo. So talk about your um, you know are you a fan of Halo? Have you played all the games? Have you read like where are you at with your Halo mm -hmm. knowledge and fandom? Very curious about that. Um, I was actually I, I didn't have a history with Halo before I started at at Mega, um, but I've been at Mega for like nine years now, so I've I've definitely um, learned a lot about the franchise and learned to love it as well. When I started at Mega, it was pretty much like I think around like the the boom of Halo, like kind of at the height of of uh, Mega Constructs, or at the time it was Mega Blocks. Uh, kind of popularity with with the halo sets uh so it was like it was pretty exciting like it was impossible to to work on on uh, in marketing at, at mega without being heavily sort of immersed in the halo yeah uh, universe because it was kind of is like that, sorry i was gonna is that the, the biggest brand i mean pokemon's huge too but is, it was halo kind of considered the big the big one yeah halo is sort of the in a way halo was kind of the the franchise that that put mega blocks you know on the map mega blocks is is I mean, for that scale of bricks, uh, obviously Mega Blocks, our preschool, uh, you know, is kind of the core part of our business right. and what we started yeah. with. But uh, it was really, I think, the Halo line that sort of brought it to a new level. A lot of the innovation that we've done with the or, or the uh, a lot of the like development or improvements in, in terms of like, uh, you know, quality or or um, new sort of like um, development of new uh types of pieces or, or new molding techniques or whatever, like a lot of those things were done for the Halo line because mm -hmm. um, it, it was kind of, um, you know, even just like the, it, the micro action figure as we know it now, like with that level of articulation, um, it kind of all started with the Halo line because they wanted to get to such a level of, of, of authenticity and, and quality that they had to sort of up their game across oh. the board and so in and a was way that, halo was sort of lifted all of mega uh in, in a way and and it was for sure the the most popular line at the time nice was that through the partnership with um 343 slash bungie that was pushing mega or was it mega wanting to do a like a knock it out of the park type situation um i mean i don't know i wasn't really there for that kind of like those early discussions but i would assume sure. it was kind of a, a mutual kind of like uh, a mutual conversation you know in terms yeah. Of, yeah. of that uh, you, you know both teams wanting the highest possible quality product and and there was a lot of people at mega who were huge fans of the franchise also uh, you know so um i think everybody kind of took it really seriously but for me i i really kind of discovered it when or or i started kind of really um appreciating it around the time of you know when i when i uh, moved over to the um the product development side because it it kind of worked out nicely because it, it was if you remember just before halo 5 came out they uh microsoft uh, 343 came out with the uh the master chief collection yeah um for xbox uh one so that was kind of a great opportunity for me to kind of get caught up and and play you know the the four main games in the series and kind of like uh immerse myself in that world for uh, for a few months and uh as well as like read a lot of wikipedia entries and and kind of lore mm -hmm. manuals and and sort of like try to learn as much as i could about the the franchise uh, uh during that period um and then and then i of course halo 5 came out and i played that as well yeah it, I, I like it i mean my kind of history with gaming is not uh i've never really been a huge uh first person shooter kind of person so mm -hmm. um, that was a that was a in a way uh i think what what appeals to me about halo is not so much the mechanics of it but more the lore uh because i think yeah. that it, it's got such a cool story such great characters and such For sure. uh, amazing designs and all that so that that sort of sci-fi uh, epic aspect of it is what really drew me in to the universe rather than the, you know, the sort of like, because, you know, the first person shooter aspect of it was kind of a, a huge deal when it came out because it was right. so new. Well, you, my friend, are on the right podcast because we are all <laughs> about that lore. So, um, yeah, and we'll, you know, maybe we'll have time to talk some lore stuff at some point um, during the during the show. But 
That's that's awesome to hear. How about um, building in general? You know, are you a, a longtime Lego guy? Um, was that part of your life growing up, or how did you, you know, before you applied for the job, you had to know what Mega made, right? Um, mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about uh, your history with with building. Um, I mean, I think growing up, it, it's like kind of impossible to grow up in the you know 80s and 90s and and not have some kind of relationship to building uh so yeah. of course i had you know i had lego uh sets when i was a kid i never had like an enormous collection though because uh i i think my kind of like my the, the toys that really really defined my childhood for me was the the masters of the universe the, yeah. the uh, he-man uh, action figures so that was really my my jam. It was that, uh, which is why, like, when the Mattel acquisition was announced, uh, I was I was pretty like one of the first things that came to mind was, oh my god, I'm going to be working for the company <laughs> that that defined my childhood. <laughs> yeah, um, that's nice. great. But uh, that's yeah, cool. I mean, Lego Lego is such a uh, beloved brand, and it has such a huge cultural impact on everything. That of course I, I was a fan. I was liked it. And uh, and that's been cool. I'm not like the I'm not the best builder or the most creative builder, but I mm. I, I I do like it. I I um, you know I have some some Lego sets that I've kind of bought since I started. Like in a weird way, working at Mega has made me love Lego even more. And and <laughs> it's it's, a, it's sort of brought me back to construction as an adult. And sure. I, I kind of started. Um, I don't know that I would have necessarily considered buying a lego set before i started working at mega but now i, I have several <laughs> so nice. yeah interesting Any yeah. <laughs> oh. uh no actually i i tend to go for the really you know i don't even know if i should be talking about this but <laughs> <laughs> uh the, the most recent one i bought was the the voltron um oh set. that thing's a beast yeah that's really yeah. cool i love uh, that okay so yeah. we got your ear of like growing up like all that you know, nice. all those cartoons back in the early 80s. I love this. It's good. That drives all the nostalgia right now. Exactly, uh, yeah. Very cool. So let's talk about the new Halo sets. They, they, they've they been out in the wild. So by the time you hear this, yeah. they've been out a little bit longer. That Hopefully more people will have in their hands. Um, hopefully we'll have them in our hands. <laughs> but let's talk about these new sets. Like, what's it been like? at mega now that these things are finally out in the wild has it been have you all been like all hush hush and be like we can't say anything to like your grandma or anything like that about this stuff or what's what's uh, been going on in the office yeah it's been uh i mean for me personally it's been like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders once we passed yeah. that embargo date because i was losing sleep over you know potential leaks and 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 any oh, wow. kind of uh information getting out earlier than than it was supposed to especially um, you and your role and social media and all that stuff right like that can be a big uh, yeah a big fire drill yeah i'm often the first person who gets a, a text message when <laughs> when uh it, you know from my boss when when something happens like have you seen this and um, right. of course it's not necessarily something that we control but uh yeah so we're we're super happy that the the cat's out of the bag uh, officially, and that we can mm -hmm. finally talk about it and and start promoting it. And uh, uh, it's really just getting started. I mean, obviously, as we kind of get closer to game launch, you know, there's going to be even more uh, kind of marketing buzz around it, and and uh, we hope that people are going to get really excited. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice, it, and it's been nice seeing the fan reaction too. Like people are just kind of flipping out over it which is great yeah i'm going to toss over to matt um do you have any thoughts on these new or any questions about these new sets because yeah I, I think yeah I'm, like we're happy with them so oh um, oh we are definitely happy with them they <laughs> are fantastic um so many so many things implications for what halo infinite is but um just on the construction level they look amazing um each set is phenomenal so i'm just going to ask do you have a favorite of the new line um yeah although i have to say i don't actually i haven't even had a chance to uh see them physically yet i mean i've seen oh. like I, i've seen models that were kind of like prototypes and things that were in development uh you know at like design reviews and things like that but i haven't actually played with the real physical sets yet because usually by this time a lot of those samples would have landed on my desk but because i'm i'm working from home i'm gonna have to actually uh, I see. Drive, drive to oh, the office sure. and, and see if i can pick up a few of them 
maybe I'll do that next week. But uh, I think I think my favorite is the the turret. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. I I just love the look of it, and uh, it's it's something. It's such a. It looks so Halo, you know. Yeah. Yes. And and yep. uh, and it just looks like a fun build as well. So I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, to building that one. I'm always super excited when Mega Construct uh, builds stationary or like uh, sets or uh, like cannons or something that you can not only play in and on, but just kind of play around. I think that's so unique about, you know, uh, the Covenant turret and previous sets. It's, it's always something I really like is when they have a stationary uh, set and you can kind of just play around it. That's that's what I love so much. So yeah, the turret is one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, but they're all great. So I'm, <laughs> I just can't, I can't, probably couldn't pick just one but the turret is is awesome and the figures that come with it are superb how do you um yeah you should, I, I think this is a good question how do you guys decide what sets to pull together right away mm-hmm. so like this first wave what how does that come to fruition you know what 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 was the process to decide this turret needs to be in the first wave the the warthog needs to be in the first wave mm-hmm. i would imagine that's a conversation with 343 yeah, absolutely. Everything is developed in in close collaboration with them. Um, the way that it happens, I mean, without getting into like kind of too much boring process detail, <laughs> we we kind of like the very first thing that happens is that someone in like a marketing manager kind of role will determine these. This is how many sets we need in the line, and these are okay. kind of the the different price points that we need. You know, so we need like a ten dollar set, and we need like a, you know, like a thirty dollar and whatever. Like we kind of so there's there's kind of like a a blank line list that can, oh. gets then handed to the design team. That in collaboration with the retailer. Like, does the retailer say, "Hey, I can only I can only charge X, Y, and Z," or how does it's, that price point uh, conversation happen? There's a lot of different factors that go into it. I mean, for sure, conversations with retailers or with our, you know, uh, kind of our, our our sales partners who who talk more directly with the retailers, mm-hmm. um, and, and sort of like market analysis and competitor analysis. Like, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, we end up at this sort of like skeleton of the line that gets handed to the the design team uh, with sort of a a few kind of like really kind of um, uh, top line sort of like guidance of like what type of stuff would would be expected to fill those slots, but not never like it, it'll never be like you know do like this vehicle with these figures. It's more like make a great toy at this price point that you know is uh, and maybe this is going to be your hero item in the line, and then mm-hmm. you know. Um, there might be some kind of things like, well, we want this price point to be kind of like uh, for like more like army building or for, you know, something that uh, that, you know, would encourage like uh, collectability or something like that. But, nice. but then all the details will come from the design team uh, in collaboration with 343. So they'll kind of like they'll look at it and they'll sort of like base it on. Mm. What did we have in the line, you know, past season? Um, what's important for the Halo franchise at that moment? Um, you know, what haven't we done in a while? Or or what are what have fans been asking for? What's worked well in the past that we could maybe bring back, you know, a few years later? All of those types of considerations. And then they kind of, they, they make a, a suggestion. And then it goes through, uh, I don't know, uh, several months of, of review right. and, and fine tuning yeah. until we get to a final product. So your That's team neat. makes the suggestion to 343 originally? Uh, it would be like the, the the brand manager. So the role that I was yeah. in previously, uh, the, um, they make the, uh, the suggestion gotcha. to the design team. And then collectively, we sort of go back to, uh, to 343 and sort of, um, uh, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're there at every step of the way, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, sort of, uh, you know, validating everything and giving us like sharing assets or su- making suggestions. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they have such a great, uh, you know, product team as well. That that like are a lot of those guys are really into toys and and they they you know they they sort of approach it really um, with a lot of enthusiasm. So it's always great working with them. So how open? And I'm sure you can't go into too much detail, but how open are they with 
you know, the details of Infinite with your team, I would imagine they got to be fairly, fairly open because you're creating products that are going to be in the game that nobody can know about it, right? All that sort of stuff. So is there some, like, one or two people within Mega that actually know what's in the game? Are they, they are the only people that are having those conversations? Or um, I guess I'm just curious about, about how that works, or if you can comment, I don't know. Yeah, we, I mean, they share a lot. <laughs> we, they do. We, That's good. We, yeah. I, I mean, mean there's things... You. Yeah, they do. I mean, you know, we have a, a, a long relationship with them as well. I think at this point, trust has been established. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they trust that we do everything we can to sort of keep that uh, under wrap. And, and I think, you know, the times that sort of little things kind of sneak out, it, it's usually kind of not, it's, it's not the result of, it's not the it's not because of the development team. It's usually once things start to get into production, that's where things can kind of, because, you know, you have products on an assembly line or whatever, or, or once they get shipped to retailers, even though there's an embargo, like th there's all kinds of things that can happen. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, yeah, we, we have such a good relationship with them that they, uh, they're they pretty open about uh, what's coming up and and um, what we can, uh, you know, what we can, have access to in terms of assets or things like that but things are changing cool. too right like because because our product development is like like right now we're working on like our, our fall 21 line is pretty much done we're gonna we're just starting to talk about spring 22 so that's how okay. far in wow. advance we're working which means when we started talking about the current line like the game wasn't finished yet and and there was mm -hmm. still a lot of things that were kind of evolving so that's another part of the challenge too yeah. yeah i mean that was kind of our assumption with halo heroes series 12 because nobody's named in it right it's the first halo hero sign where we don't have a named character and i would imagine that planning process is, is was part of it right um yeah. where maybe maybe the main characters weren't decided you know outside of chief right but um maybe the main or characters they may, weren't decided I mean, they, they may have been decided, but we just couldn't put them in the line because it would be a spoiler. Like, there's right. there's a lot of things that, knowing that the game only comes out towards the end of the year, uh, we had to sort of pull out of the of the toy line because they were potentially spoilers. Yeah, that makes sense. Tom, what do you have? I know you have something brewing in there. Oh, I it, it was an off-the-cusp question. I was going to ask um have you had the chance to visit the halo museum Jan? uh no i haven't i've actually never been to uh uh 343 either like i've, I've never had a chance to I, i've met a lot of people in person from 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 343 but not at their headquarters um which is uh unfortunate but uh, maybe one day yeah well i mean guys if you're listening in get yarn over there <laughs> <laughs> that's right but just make sure he stays six feet away from everybody yeah yeah there's there not a lot go. of business travel these days <laughs> no. yeah for sure favorite reveal so far um of the new line wait was that was that that was for you tom what's oh, what's your okay. favorite reveal um what's your favorite set so I'm, I'm gonna kind of dupe this question a little bit sure i am excited for all of them purely because um i am very excited that right now I can log on to Smiths and actually see Halo sets on the website again. That has me very excited. <laughs> so I'm just glad that we're kind of getting back to um, right around that time when you were brand um, leading on with obviously all of the Halo 5 sets and um, actually having lots of built sets out there and seeing them on shops is very exciting for me. I think that made sense. I'm just like... It's taking me so back seeing so many sets like available in Smiths again. So I'm very mm -hmm. excited for the whole thing and kind of to slowly sink my teeth back into the experience of collecting. <laughs> well, we've been living in this world where it's been five years since a Halo game has been out there. So we've 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 mainline seen the effects. Halo. I'm sh mainline Halo, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, we've we've seen the effects. I think all of us, you know, as collectors, and I'm sure Jan, you have. Um, let's just get the elephant out of the room. Let's talk about distribution right now. Let's just let's just do that. Um, you, you mentioned before um, before we hopped on the recording that you can talk a little bit about that. Um, what's going on with distribution these days? <laughs> what can we expect? Um, you know, we know Target, we know Walmart, we know Dollar General. Um, what what can you what can you tell us about you know finding sets and availability and all that sort of fun stuff? Sure. 
Um, I mean, I, I, I think I've been, uh, I, I personally sort of like made it my mission to be as, as transparent as possible about what's going on with distribution because I, I see it uh, every day on, on, uh, on social media and in our own community, like everywhere. It's, it's the number one, uh, you know, uh, comment or pain point that people have uh, is is uh, distribution, and it, it makes mm -hmm. it really hard for us to talk about anything else because every time we're getting excited about something and promoting it, uh, there there'll be you know a, a handful of comments in in the underneath the post, kind of asking, right. yeah, but what about distribution? Um, so so it's been difficult. Uh, I I don't uh, I, I don't know if I have the exact kind of timeline of what happened uh, in my head, but um, I know that in, in the past couple of years, there's been a significant uh, dip in terms of uh, uh, global distribution, uh, especially I think in Europe, but even, even uh, domestic distribution has been impacted quite a bit. Um, but I've been telling people for about a year now that fall 20 is the the moment where you should start to see sets in your local stores again. Um, Huzzah. And, and I think uh, <laughs> I, I was really happy to hear that, you know, uh, you're seeing some some sets in in uh, on uh, online uh, retailers in the UK, which I, yeah. I think is is a, a really good sign that uh, I haven't been lying. And, and that <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, for whatever it's worth, I, I think what happened was that it was a, a combination of factors, um, you know, that uh, it, it's always kind of easy for people outside of the, the, the outside of the organization to kind of speculate and point fingers yeah. at, you know, exactly. oh, it's because of Mattel, it's because of whatever. But the reality is that it, it's it's a it's a combination of factors. Some of it mistakes that that we made. Others, uh, you know, just kind of um, either because of things haven't performed well and and retailers reacted to certain mm -hmm. uh, realities in the market. Uh, and even, you know, things that were completely outside of our control, like, you know, uh, problems in, in, in manufacturing that caused some delays. And then you have kind mm. of retailers penalizing it for you know, that kind of thing. Like the, those are all kind of uh, a, a variety of factors that kind of happened more or less around the same time and caused us to really suffer in our distribution for the past couple of years. And how big of a deal was the Toys R Us thing? Oh, and that too. I mean, obviously, yeah. yeah. Like Toys R Us uh, is, I mean, Toys R Us was like the only place where you could go and kind of like see, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how many feet of, of uh, you know, of shelf space we had. But right. that was yeah. like, yeah. that was the only place that you could, could see that. And, and there's, I don't think there's ever... I don't know about ever, but it, it seems like there might never be a place like that ever again, yeah. right. uh, which is kind of crazy for the, the whole toy industry, I think. But mm -hmm. um, I think we're just kind of, you know, it just means that we're in a new reality and, and we're not the only ones who have to kind of uh, find new ways of getting our toys to people. So, you know, more more emphasis on digital and, and things like that. Um, and also, you know, diversifying the different kind of distribution channels which is why we're at at different places you know not just the big uh the big uh, uh department stores mm -hmm. um i just wanted to say off of the back of that thank you for the actual transparency because i know you say you aim to do that but you've done a really good job of doing that and i really appreciate for sure, that for sure um i remember when you made Oh, it, it was a while back and you probably remember it because I think it was one of the first like big posts you made on it Jan but you commented on one of the threads on the forums and you had just basically said look we know it's an issue and we're looking into it and I really appreciated that because it shows that actually you do listen to everyone and even if it's something that you can't always discuss publicly because obviously um, there's so many different factors to consider there, like relationships with retailers and everything else like that. It is really refreshing to know that we're being heard and that actually you are working hard behind the scenes to try and action um, different things so people can get their hands on these products. So 
I just wanted to take the chance to say thank you for that because I do appreciate it. Yeah, that. definitely. Kind of thank you so much. Takes me back to like the good old days of <laughs> Mega Blocks. <laughs> yeah, well, nice. I, I'm I'm really glad that people appreciate it. I mean, it's it's something that it's been on our radar for a long time, but it's so like you said, it's delicate. We don't want to throw anyone under the bus. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to affect our relationship with any of our partners and and. Um, and uh, and sometimes you know we don't necessarily uh, uh, some of the people we don't want to throw under the bus are also you know uh, ourselves because <laughs> yeah. because we we have a certain share of responsibility in in that as well but um, yeah I mean I think it's important to kind of let the fans know that you know we we're there we're listening and we're doing something about it it's just it's it's a slow process it's not something that you can just kind of turn around. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in an instant and yeah. and um, uh, I think we're, we're really starting to see the fruits of our labor and and I have high hopes that uh, it's going to be a really good year for for Mega and for Halo. Good that's yeah. what we like to hear. That makes sense I mean it takes corporations it takes a while to turn them so you know all those things you mentioned in the in losing Toys R Us, which was a big shelf space for you guys. It, it takes a while to react yeah. to all that because yeah. then you know then Target and Walmart they have to all be receptive to saying, hey, yeah, we're gonna give you more space or whatever it is. So, so uh, um, yeah, the, yeah, the transparency helps a lot. I, I think if I can just say one more thing about that too is like that a lo there's a lot of you know um, a lot of of people kind of speculate about the impact that Mattel had on on Mega, and I think that's something that uh it is sometimes difficult to hear also because a, a lot of the times the assumption is that like oh mega i mean mattel uh ruined it or M mattel somehow mm -hmm. had a negative impact on mega but the the truth is that being part of mattel has also opened up so many doors for us uh, we have access to you know a lot of resources and and we're taken seriously as a as a uh, you know, a, a player in in the industry, uh, in a way that we we couldn't really, you know, th those doors wouldn't have been open for us just as Mega. Mm -hmm. And 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 there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of really great people at Mattel that that we learn from every day and that help us in in all kinds of ways. And and it's really, um, y you know, th there's there's things that had to change after the Mattel acquisition that were kind of just as a result of um you know like that's kind of just what happens when you join the big leagues yeah you kind of yeah. have to rethink a little bit your business model and you have you know different expectations in terms of profitability or whatever and that's mm -hmm. just kind of like the the reality of doing business at at that level um and so there was some growing pains and there's some kind of you know some short term hits on on our distribution that may or may not have had to do with all that but Ultimately, Mattel is there to support us, and we're, you know, we're really happy to be part of that family. So, yeah, that's, that's great. Excellent to hear. to hear. Yeah, great to hear. Is there anything? Maybe this is a weird question. Is is there anything we can do as collectors and fans to help with that? I mean, obviously, buy more stuff, right? But um, <laughs> we need to be able to find it to buy it. Um, yeah, anything we can do to help with that? I mean, continue to be vocal. I don't know if that's a thing. I mean, we want to be positive, obviously, but we're all rooting for you. So, yeah. I mean, I think I really appreciate it when when people in the community speak up, you know, on our behalf. Uh, that that always goes a long way, I think, because, you know, no matter how much transparency I try to, you know, I strive for, and and no matter how many posts I do on our forum that gets screenshotted and and kind of shared elsewhere, like not everybody's going to see it. Yeah. And so you're always going to have people kind of, you know. Uh, I'll say complaining, although it's legitimate con complaints. Uh, it's it's not necessarily a criticism, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and and I could spend all day responding to every one of these comments and and yeah. saying, you know, well, actually, you know, take a look at this or whatever. But it's it's always good when other people kind of step up and and spread the word. I maybe that's something. But ultimately, it's on us. You know, we kind of have to. I mean. That's the other thing, right? It's like for for the longest time, I, I mean, I had people in our teams or or like uh, you know uh, people higher up in the company that were kind of coming to me and saying, 
yeah, and you have to do something about this distribution issue. You have to talk to them. And, and I was like, well, I can't, there's really nothing I can tell them that will make them happy because mm -hmm. they just want the products to be in store. So that's the first thing we have to fix. Uh, and, and it's not a communication problem. It's a, it's a distribution problem. So, right. Um, but I think, yeah, I think we're getting there. We cool. definitely appreciate all the hard work that you guys are putting in behind the scenes, you know, so we thank you so much for that. Yeah, we see things trending the right way and it sounds like you're, you're positive and excited about that. So that's, that's good to hear. So hopefully, um, hopefully good things are ahead. I have a question to build off this and I don't know how much you can comment on it, but, um, as, as a newer collector, um, I've run into the, I don't know, issue, um, the difficulty of resellers and, and higher prices than I'm wanting to see and, and all that sort of stuff. Do you guys have a stance on on that? Scalping is a term that's thrown out there. Um, is that something mm -hmm. you can talk about or or kind of what, what, how do you guys react to that sort of that concept? Because you know it's out there, right? Yeah, of course. I, I know that it's a thing that gets... Uh, like scalpers is a term that gets thrown around a lot in 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 the community, or uh, and and I understand the frustration. I think the issue for me though is that I like I don't even really think that there's any legal recourse for us to kind of go right. after them, and I don't even think that would be worth our time. I think that I think it it makes more sense to focus on the root of the issue, which is make those sets available. In, right. to, to the people who want them and and because if we you know if we have our if our sets are readily available for people to purchase in stores um those scalpers are going to go out of business like they're not going to mm -hmm. be able to keep charging extra for for sets that you can just buy at walmart for you know half the price or whatever yep so right. and, and the other thing is like we don't you know we don't profit in any way from <laughs> from people reselling our stuff at a, at a, at a premium, like that's not something that is good right. for our business at all. So it's not, uh, it, it's frustrating for us too, but I just think rather than, I, I think it's just a symptom of, of the, of the problem rather than the cause of it. So I, for mm -hmm. me, I don't, I don't spend my, my, my focus on that. I would rather, uh, make sure that we have good distribution and good, um, you know, people have access to the, the sets and then, it'll it'll kind of eradicate the issue of, of the resellers yep that makes sense well cool i appreciate you um talking to us about some of those tough questions that we've all um we've all had and uh, hopefully you know this um the show gets gets out there and, and can help um you know help people's put people's mind at ease about that sort of stuff um let's talk about some more fun stuff <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about the direction on the Black Series. Um, I I think it's great, and I think it probably maybe packaging goes into that, and like realizing that you ha your audience is a little bit older, um, and you know trying to appeal to those collectors along with you know the the younger younger builders. But um, is Black Series a reaction to that? Um, can you can you talk about kind of the the how you're um, just evolving your brand a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think it's something that, you know, uh, over the years we've sort of looked for different ways to kind of uh, help clarify for consumers the, 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 the sort of wide variety of products that we offer uh, as a brand. Um, and, and in a way, kind of like the same problem that, I don't know if it's a problem or the same the same uh, issue that the the black series is is kind of responding to is is also what led to the the separation of mega constructs from mega blocks mm -hmm. um, because you know it, it it has to do with brand perception like if people if people really associate mega blocks with those big uh, you know toddler plastic blocks that uh, that that everyone you know um, knows and, and, and is sort of like our, our most recognizable product. Um, and then you tell them, oh, I have, you know, where there's a new, um, I don't know, Call of Duty Mega Bloks line. Uh, it, it's like, if you don't know that we also make a, a whole bunch of other products, and you only know those big 
baby blocks, you're like, right. what? That, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> why, 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 why would you offer that product? Like it's yeah. It's, yeah. Can you make so, an assault rifle out of mega blocks? Like the big ones. <laughs> yeah. I've got the big so, interesting products in my head right now. <laughs> and I mean, so so that's something that you know we've had to uh, clarify with consumers, you know, and and so. Mega constructs came sort of as a as a way to distance ourselves from the you know from from the kind of preschool offer and, yeah. and to make it clear in consumers' minds that when we're talking mega constructs, it's actually a different scale and it's a different uh, you know it's a different target consumer. And but but then even within mega constructs, you still have a pretty wide range because you'll have products like um, you know the Pokemon line or or some of our you know um, other licenses that are much more kid friendly. And then you kind of have things like Halo that are sort of sitting in between that have a pretty wide range of of, in, of appeal, right. um, you know. And then you have stuff like Call of Duty, Game of Thrones that are based on mature properties that obviously are not appropriate for you know a, a seven or an eight year old. Right. So that's where the Black Series came about as a sort of uh, clarification to consumers that no, these are not these are not meant for kids these are actually mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of more you know serious collector items for fans of the franchises that are age appropriate let's say yeah so is it fair to say that we can see more of the brands get tucked under black series mm -hmm. over you know as you know as that continues to gain traction yeah i mean it it depends on kind of what comes our way uh, i think there's a, uh, I don't even know really how many active brands we have in, under that uh, banner. Just a couple, now, I but, think, uh, right now. Yeah, Game uh, of Thrones yeah. and, um, like oh, Alien the X-Files. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of sort of brands that just kind of have like, you know, a, a few kind of figures will kind of show up in the line and, and under the, the Black Series banner, but we're not going to do like a full line of toys for them or sets, I should say. Mm hmm I was going to ask off in the back of that because it's kind of been something that I've been um, more casually collecting, mainly because it really caught my attention when you did X Files. I'd like never thought I'd see a brand tackling that in the modern day. Um, so, how do you guys kind of choose those other brands? Like, is it a process where they approach you, or do you kind of look at perhaps what's popular in pop culture and then go for that? How does that work? Uh, again, it's a combination of things. I mean, sometimes yeah. brands will pitch uh, things to us. Sometimes they come to Mattel. You know, there, there might be kind of a, maybe they're they're really trying to get Hot Wheels on board, for example. And then it's like, oh, well, they're, they're already talking to Mattel. Why don't we just kind of see if they're interested in doing a construction line at the same time? Other times it's things that we go after. You know, we just kind of knock on their door and say, would you be interested? And then we see what happens. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, I was going to I was going to say with the Black series and certain sets like uh, obviously Game of Thrones the the show is for a mature audience, but even just on like a set level, the sets are awesome and so I could see, you know, maybe they don't watch the show, but um a younger audience is actually playing with the sets, you know, cuz it's a cool dragon or it's a, something like that. So, so I could see anybody just like, "Oh, cool dragon. You want to play with that, you know?" <laughs> right. I mean, I know that's what I've never seen Game of Thrones, but like I want to get that dragon. So I'm like, "Oh, that's so cool." You got to get that dragon. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's a fun build. I I'm curious about the the new offering to the the versus packs that you have. Um do, can you talk about how those came about? Because it's, it looks like you're, you know, you have some in Halo, um, and then you have some in the, in the other brands as well. Is that just another way of getting, you know, like kind of like the heroes figure type figures in, you know, in the hands of your customers? Was that was that driven by Halo, or was that like a larger idea? Do you know kind of how that um, came about? Yeah, I'm I'm actually not 100 percent sure, but I I know that you know often we'll sort of if something works well in one line, we'll kind of like learn from that and sort of see, well, can we apply this to another line? And mm -hmm. I mean, even the Halo Heroes was kind of a new form factor that we launched in, uh, that was the year that I was brand manager, actually. It was the, around the time of Halo 5, uh, mm -hmm. we introduced Halo Heroes as a sort of, you know, we saw that there was kind of an opportunity for an additional fig figure offer in between the blind bag and the uh, sort of um, the fig packs that we were doing, so we mm -hmm. went for this kind of like in between price point with a 
more deluxe kind of figure in a blister pack. And then once that did so well in Halo, then it it sort of it, it was kind of replicated in the rest of the Mega Construct collector kind of world. And we started doing it for, for other brands as well. Probably Do you have a favorite figure yourself? Oof. Like in the Halo line or yeah, yes. one of like something that you produced. But do you do you have a favorite or maybe a couple favorites? I I don't know that I I don't know that I do have a favorite. There's a I mean, I think the ones that I get really excited about again are like Masters of the Universe just because yeah. it brings yeah. me back to my childhood. So those are the ones that I'm collecting and that I'm kind of excited about. What's your uh, favorite in those the Masters of the Universe? Um that that's I been mean, released. Probably know about some that you can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think like even just kind of the the classic ones even just seeing like he-man and skeletor was like yeah that was so yeah. exciting to yeah, finally yeah, see yeah. those because we had like prototypes of those like from five days after mattel acquisition was announced we already had right. those like <laughs> prototypes ready to go and we we're like right. this has to happen <laughs> clearly but, uh, you weren't nice. the only excited one <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean i'm looking at i'm just kind of glancing at my shelf here i'm seeing uh scare glow is a pretty cool uh yeah figure cool also um i don't know i mean in the halo line I, I there's a few uh that i that are sort of close to my heart also like I, just in terms of maybe just because it it was kind of that that wave that i was a little bit more involved in product development but that you know that year uh, i really liked the arbiter that we did so can you speaking of the arbiter and halo heroes can you talk about series five at all because that one seems to be the one that's the most rare these days. Um, and uh, clearly you guys don't make them anymore. But was there anything specific about that waved? Or do, I think you might have been working on the line about that time. Um, was that one underproduced? Or was it just kind of have, have to do with all that distribution stuff we talked about? Yeah, I, I don't know the details of what happened but it was it was basically i think it had to do with timing uh either the line was a little bit late or or something like that and we ended up kind of losing placement in some mm -hmm. retailers and it just kind of like had sort of a, a chain reaction effect that it kind of led to a lot of problems but don't quote me on that because i don't i i don't remember the the specific details but it was sure. it was kind of a mishap it was a mishap that it just kind of it led to it really getting poor distribution and it's unfortunate because i know i know a lot of people wanted to get their hands on those uh on those figures would you has there been conversations about ever like reproducing any of any ones that that are popular that people are climbing for or, or packaging because i know like in the masters of the universe specifically there's one pack it's like what um the attorney pack something like that where it's got like four or five of the major figures yeah. Has that been discussed at all for from the, for the Halo line? Uh, I mean, I don't I don't know all the conversations that happen. I'm sure there's probably some conversations about it. It's rare that a figure will come back in the line without some kind of variation. Yeah, it, right, even if right. it's just like a little, you know, a, like a different paint pass or something. It's pretty rare that we'll bring it back exactly the same. Um, and a lot is that of like a manufacturing be... prop thing then, like like the mold's gone or something like that. Uh, it could be, but it it could also just be that it's harder to pitch it to retailers if it's like not if there's not some kind of newness involved. Sure. Uh, right. And especially if it's something that didn't perform well the first time around, and you kind of go back to retailers and you're like, oh, hey, we have this great thing that we want to we want to yeah. sell it's it's this line that did terribly a year ago and, you know, <laughs> definitely i mean even there's though, like five people that want it but yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and usually so. when those figures come back they come back in greater detail and they come back way better so usually i'm, I'm always i'm okay with when the changes happen because most of the time majority of the time they're they're for the better yeah. Mm -hmm. i wanted to ask because i think um obviously mentioning the arbiter yarn it would have been right when um, again, you were brand manager. What was the kind of process like with the Halo 5 Guardians SDCC exclusive? Because I remember there was such a buzz in the community at the time when that came out. And obviously you had Locke, the Arbiter and the Chief. It was like the perfect exclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that's, <laughs> it's funny. That's, that's the figure I was thinking of earlier. Oh, cool. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> nice. I remember I remember two things from my time as as brand manager kind of being uh, the biggest headache possible in terms of just logistics and getting things kind of to production. One of them was the rec packs. Uh, that was an absolute nightmare just in terms of 
you know, getting the proper codes printed on cards and slipping them in the boxes. Like there was just so many complicated issues around that. And then the other one was the shape of the box of the yeah. SDCC exclusive. Yeah. No. <laughs> we, yeah. We, spent, yeah. we spent so much time on it because, uh, and I remember my boss at the time, you know, we would just kind of like keep going to him. Like I would, I would work with the the packaging team and sort of like, give them a brief and be like, you know, just make it super cool and like lots of cool angles and, you know, looking really premium or whatever. And then the, they would come with these amazing things and we'd show it to my boss and, and you would just say, mm, it's not, it's not really cool enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we would just kind of try to like kick it up a notch and, and the team did a great job. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what I remember about that. Exclusive, awesome. That is that box sort of like trying to, make it uh look you know special enough because it was the first time we were doing i, I think it was the first time we did an uh, sccc exclusive if i remember yeah. like the first time that you guys have really doubled down and done a proper brick built one because i remember there'd always been minifigures but they were kind of never really that exclusive whereas that was the item that like everyone had to get and i remember um one of my friends had a list of like six of us in the uk that he had to go and pick them up for so i have very <laughs> very fond memories of that one yeah well just just touching on that the the box design the the work you guys put into it it's it's, it's much appreciated because right now i'm looking at mine and it's probably the, my most prized mega construct piece i have I, I mean i love the box so much i never opened out the figures or anything so it's all still in box but i have it right on my shelf and it's like the centerpiece of my collection so the box design was phenomenal so i, I really appreciate all the hard work you guys put in on that because the, the box is it just screams halo I, i'm glad someone appreciated it <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it i feel like i've committed a travesty now because i've just got the free figures from it on my shelf with the rest of my figures <laughs> oh you opened yours i did yeah <laughs> well, I was going to open mine and then my brother's like, no, no, you should save the box. And I'm like, yes, you're right. And so yeah. I remember I didn't have the Arbiter. I didn't have the Arbiter at the time because the, the Arbiter came out later with the, the, the Warthog set. So yeah. I remember just I was always opening it up and just it was leading up to that Halo 5 hype. And I was just always opening up the box and just looking at it. And I was always so tempted to just rip them out. But I'm like, nah, save it in the box. So now I have this. <laughs> Beautiful box with its figures in it. I love it. Matt, let them breathe. Come on, they're suffocating in there. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't. I think I like um, the box the figures, to be honest. <laughs> I kind of want to talk about, and I don't know if you can comment, um, Jan, but just kind of future, what our expectations should be for the Halo line. Um, is that, you know, there's there's clearly Halo's going to be around for a while. That's why we're all here. Um, is there anything you can tell us about, um, I don't know, like what what we're gonna get not specifics but like you guys are gonna keep working on stuff we're gonna keep getting vehicles are, are there talks about you know are there one of the things that and and Matt mentioned this earlier is like we want structures right there's mm -hmm. not a, not a ton of structures is are those in conversations um what kind of what what can we expect down the road uh I mean obviously there's not that much I can say because yeah. it it's all kind of under wraps i think oh, come on you can trust us <laughs> well it's like can you talk about waves like like is there planned like you know we, we we've kind of sussed out that we usually get what like three blind bag series a year or something like that like is that still on the roadmap you know is there gonna be a spring wave you know probably right is there anything like that you just in in general you can talk about i uh, i think what i'll say is that like there's definitely more stuff from Halo Infinite that we haven't that we haven't included in the fall line that's mm -hmm. going to come out later. So you can expect that's cool more cool things from the game. Uh, and you know, remember the game's going to come out sometime later this year. And and so it, you know, people will be still kind of uh, excited, hopefully, about you know um, seeing new things in the game that they they hope uh, either it's characters or or, or whatever. Um, That's great to hear. So they they should see that coming in the in the next couple of seasons, and then I mean beyond that I don't know I guess it depends what's next for the Halo franchise as as well you know and they always have bigger and 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 better things on the horizon so I'm sure the I'm sure there'll be a lot of fun surprises. I off the back of that and it it might be something again you can't really talk about but obviously. Um, more broadly, so Halo's got a TV series coming up, but obviously we've had 
two in the past with Forward Unto Dawn and Nightfall. Um, and I recently managed to get my hands on Smuggler's Intercept, which is one of my favourite sets now. So I'm just interested, do you guys ever get like the opportunity to go and explore that kind of expanded material a lot more? Is that kind of always there if you ever want to go and do it? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, those kinds of things are, are things that we kind of tap into, especially in a non-game year. Yeah. Uh, so I think we'll continue to explore the expanded universe as well. Yeah. That's great. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we are in a tough spot. because There's only so much you can tell us, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, we can dream, right? <laughs> like, it sounds like we can still we could still dream once we play the game and like, Oh, I hope they come out with this. And then, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. you will come out with that. Right. So that's, that's good to hear. So you, you're, you, you work now, your role, current role is like social media and community, stuff like that. Um, are there any programs or anything like that? Like you used to have the, um, and I'm, I didn't collect at the time, but you used to have like a community program, right? Like its own website and stuff like that. Is there anything like that going on that we're not aware of or anything in the plans? Does just like community interactions outside of just, you know, the standard, you know, forum stuff that I, at least I know that's active right now. Anything out there that, that you guys are doing for, for outreach? Yeah, there's a few things on the horizon that I'm excited about. I think oh, the, you know, the app that I mentioned earlier that we just released is a, uh, is something that we hope to continue to develop and expand on. So that ties into some interesting programs that are on the horizon. Also, I, I think one of the things that I'm that I've really been kind of focusing on is is trying to get more builders in the community because we have a lot of collectors. We have a lot of people who are like huge fans of, you know, the Halo franchise and who love mm -hmm. to collect sets. But I'm, I'm really trying to do things that will kind of encourage more uh, people who are really good builders of custom creations and things like that and working with oh, them nice. and supporting them. Ooh. So I have, you know, I'm reaching out to people and sort of like finding ways that we can support them in their projects to sort of like build custom uh, creation. So hopefully that sort of has a uh, an effect on uh, on sort of overall appeal of the brand and it kind of gets it nice. sort of so it brings more That's people awesome. in. Yeah, um, I'm sure you have them on your list, but Brickman 117 yeah. does some amazing <laughs> stuff. Like, wow. Yeah, I was on the phone with him earlier this week, actually. So. Oh, good nice. for him. Uh, That's awesome. Some he's good a, stuff coming that way. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. So that's that's good to hear. Awesome. Tom, any other questions that you have? Um, anything else burning? No, I think, yeah, just thank you for kind of keeping it real and being so open with things because it's nice to really get that level of communication because it's not something that you sort of get every day. You know, you kind of just collect these things, but you don't necessarily get to have these kind of like very real, very grounded conversations with the people behind the things that you enjoy about what some of the potential problems are, about what might be on the horizon. Um, so I think we just appreciate you being willing to kind of have that dynamic and kind of use this as an open forum. And yeah, thank you for that, because I think the listeners will really appreciate that. Most certainly. I have thank two things. Matt, do you have any other, any other questions? I was I was just going to ask really quick about um, sets that are exclusive to certain, you know, we'll have like Target exclusives or Walmart exclusives. So what's kind of the rationale behind how do they, how do you approach that? Or how does it come to one set is exclusive to a certain area? Or is that just something that the retailers ask of you? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, you know, it, I almost brought that up earlier when we were talking about distribution, because I think people sometimes react negatively when they find out that something is an exclusive and they think that, you know, we're trying to, we're making it harder for people to get the sets that they want. But the, the reality is that it actually helps us get better distribution. Sometimes, you know, to sweeten the deal with a certain retailer, they'll say, you know, well, I'll take this, but I want you to give me an exclusive. And, and then kind of those negotiations happen. And, it's always in return for something else, you know, like they'll, right. they'll take an exclusive and, and then agree to support the line in a bigger way. So it's it's kind of just calculated sort of uh, opportunities and, and to try to get as much reach as we can with our line. Yeah, I've only ever seen it as positive because just looking at like an exclusive set, I've always kind of seen it as, oh, you definitely know that this set is going to be at this particular place. So I've always kind of seen it in a positive light, but um, I guess some would take it negatively. And if it 
And if it helps you, you know, build stronger relations with retailers for greater distribution, I mean, it's, it's even better. And the other thing is that it's, it's usually like the way to look at it is that if it weren't an exclusive, it wouldn't exist. So it's not like, it's not like we made mm. a great oh. toy and then we said, we'll only give it to this retailer. It's more like there was a need for an exclusive and then the toy came ah. into being to fill that need. So, so it's yeah, better it's for everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, thank you. Is there a resource on your website that sa- explicitly says <clears throat> all of your retail partners? I know there's like a where to buy section on Mattel. Yeah, it's a, that's a, I, I wish there was a better resource. It's a little difficult to get that information up to date and really uh, as, as kind of reliable as we want it to be. Sure. But yeah, I, there is a where to buy on on our website I'm, I'm not sure how reliable it is <laughs> yeah i know I, I know how that goes trust me for the most part when i use it it's pretty reliable i usually buy most of my stuff online so if i ever uh click the tab it says online and so i usually pick it up at amazon but uh it's pretty reliable for me okay well that's good to know maybe it's yeah. better than i think <laughs> i shouldn't be so hard on, on our it's good but, stuff it's good stuff well, and I know as a newer collector, it would just be nice to have, and I made my own list, right? I had, I, <laughs> when I was starting to, to realize, hey, this is something I want to dig into and start collecting all these sets, I had to make my own list just from having conversations within the community. I, I think it would be appreciated if there is some place somewhere, you know, if, it, if it's in a forum, that's fine, or even official page, it says, okay, you can find our products these specific retailers that would just help with my hunt as i (laughs) help with my gas mileage as i'm driving (laughs) around to places that just don't carry mega and some places carry mega but just don't have it in stock some places just it's not sold there so um i know that would probably you know that would be appreciated for sure what were the other things i was going to talk about oh um so along those same lines can you comment on where we can find all of the new sets like where is that pelican going to show up where is the um, the AA turret going to show up? Is that going to show up at all of your retailers, Walmart, Target, Amazon, or are they going to be, or, or yeah. is some not going to show up at specific stores? Uh, the majority of those sets are should be available like at, at all of the major retailers. Yeah. So Yay. For, for the U.S., that means uh, you know Walmart, Target, Amazon, and then I can't really say what that means for the rest of the world, but whatever the kind of big retailers, um, hopefully that's where they'll be. Um, right. There's only a few exclusives in the line. Um, Target has a few, and uh, yeah, Dollar General. For the most part, it's it's uh, it's wide distribution. Excellent. We've I've mentioned the hunt a couple times. Do you guys talk about that at all, or do you get aware of the hunt at as a mega employee? Yeah, we are. I mean, we sort of. There was a time a few years ago where we actually considered building an app to let people, to help people with that, where you could sort of, when you spot something in stores, you could kind of take a picture of it and upload it with like geolocation and then other people would be able to find it. But there was a lot of kind of privacy issues around it and and we kind of ended up abandoning it. But uh, yeah, we know that people... uh, (laughs) <laughs> well, I know the community kind of uses Twitter for that. You see the thing, oh, I found it at Target. Go, go, go. Well, I know, and I know you're not on Facebook, Matt, but Facebook, there's some groups in Facebook that do that exact same thing. Oh, they'll, nice. take a, they'll take a, they'll yeah. like be filming their experience in Target and they'll show <laughs> the entire, the entire um, shelf. Yeah, and it's like, hey, anybody need anything? I'm going to be here for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> go, go, go. Right. That's cool. Um, well, let's let's close it there. We did have um, we did post a couple um, polls in the community just to see what we wanted to talk about um, because there's you know there's lots of subjects. I think we covered most of it. New sets, distribution um, was one, and um, you know I, I think we n- mentioned like structures and a couple other things that that people wanted to talk about. So thanks for everybody that responded on Facebook and Discord for that. Something we haven't covered yet, I guess, before we close the show is. At one point, a couple of years ago, Mega and 343 both commented on the project that, that you had been working on, the video game project that you've been working on. Can you tell us any more uh, about that? I, I think that video game will, will never uh, will never see the light of day. I think there's Aww. there's there's footage of it somewhere. Maybe, there is. I think, yeah, that would have been fun. And who knows, maybe it'll come back in a different form. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's nothing uh, nothing currently uh, in development. Yeah, no, I, the 343 went on record saying this is Project's Killed. But I was just curious... Um, if you if you could expand on it at all. Yeah, no, I think it was a I think it was kind of a, a dream 
project for some people at you know at, at Mega, and and uh, they they managed to convince three four three to <laughs> to give it a shot at some point. <laughs> I wasn't really part of those discussions, but uh, sure. I know it would have been it would have been pretty exciting to see. I'm sure. I, I guess they they have uh, you know they have lots of other things on their plate. Well, we can well, dream. Maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe one day. That's right. Maybe one day. Well, Jan, thanks so much for joining us um, and answering all of our questions. This has been um, really good, really informative, and I hope the the show will help kind of get the word out about a lot of the, you know, the questions that people have and and um, just help build excitement for the new the new sets that are coming out. Because that's, I mean, that's to be the focus right now. Because we're we're excited to get these things in our own hands, um, start building, start customizing, um, start displaying. So we are um, we're excited to <laughs> start photographing. That's right, and Creating those animating, yeah. That's right. <laughs> animating. It'll yeah, be yeah. good. So lots of exciting things um, are ahead. And, you know, we have two Halo Spotlight folks on the board here. So some some feature acts. So we'll see what you guys come up with <laughs> in, the, in the future. Thank you so much for answering our questions and coming on. It has been a huge honor for us to, to have this conversation with you. Uh, definitely lots of insightful and... Uh, really intriguing things coming in the future i'm sure thanks guys it's been it's been a lot of fun talking to you maybe we'll have some other uh some other mega guests uh, available yes uh, for a future podcast that would be fun as well yes please Absolutely. yeah we'd love that i mean we're dedicated to you guys so um <laughs> that would that would be fantastic that will do it for our show thanks for joining builds with blocks if you uh, like the show feel free to support podcast evolved on Patreon. Until next time, evolved. 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 Woo! Yeah! <laughs>